Hello and welcome back. After last week's video where we, we were looking at the, uh, the Pullman set RS52, I thought I should probably see how many coaches um, she would pull around my layout and especially up the incline. So I've got, uh, I think I've got four centre cars on here and she does make it up the incline and there's a bit of minimal wheel slip as we get to the top if you just watch this. It slows down a little, it's quite a heavy load all of those uh, wheels on the coaches, just uh, pinpoints with plastic wheels. And we've just got the, uh, the single motor bogey on the front unit there. So I think that's quite impressive, of that incline. On the, on the level, she'd pull way more, I think. No, no trouble at all. Although I think she might be a bit hesitant on the uh, first radius curves. But now I think we'll uh, prepare to get her into the passing loop. So we'll just slow down a little here into the bend. And then we'll open. Points number five. Looking pretty well behaved. A little wobble on these models, but uh, I think there, there always is with these triad models. We'll snap those points shut behind her. There we go, and we'll crawl around the loop and we'll bring them to a stop just be by the, uh, the male pickup point, I think, at the end of the loop, just before we get to points number four. Nice, gentle stop there. Then we're going to get this rake of uh, blood and custard coaches out of the station. Nice green princess there, R53 from the uh, from the uh, mid mid 50s, I think this model is. Lovely smooth runner, has a great sound on the track. And uh, we'll see if we can get this uh, fog signal to play. Here we go. Quite a crack, isn't it? And see a little flash there, a little wobble on that lead coach and we'll run around past the station. Really is a, a, a great group of models to run, great fun this, charging around the layout with the princess. I think what we'll do is we'll uh, turn the mics down and see if we can uh, have another go with that fog signal and see, see what we can see. That was far more impressive, even if the camera was slightly out of focus there. Makes a fairly good sound, doesn't it? Actually, the uh, the iPhone doesn't tend to record the uh, the uh, explosion quite as nicely as you hear it uh, with your own ears. And also, when running on the layout, it does pick up the noise of the uh, the model hitting the uh, the striker arm. So I was pointing out the wrong arm there, so the, the locomotive strikes this to uh, activate it. So when when that goes that way, it releases this. Uh, this mechanism here, very mousetrap-like, isn't it? Um, so you do tend to pick up that noise of it striking that as well as that when you when you play it back on the video. Still, let's see if we can uh, encourage it to make another bang. So caps are quite variable. I've noticed that um, sometimes the, the caps are printed off center, which doesn't really help. But uh, this roll that I've got in here seems to be fairly reliable. Let, let's see if we can uh, give that another go. So let's... Uh, Reprime it. And let's see if we can advance that and get uh, one more uh, bang out of this. There we go, just hold that in position. And I imagine my thumb is the, the locomotive passing. Let's see what we get. There we go, a nice uh, encouraging bang there. So, fairly. Uh, interesting device isn't it i think you could have had hours of fun as i sus suspect sorry uh, caps were much better when we were younger though they were i wasn't around when uh, this was released this came along or as it, it was shown in the catalogue in 63 but uh, i remember caps in the 70s being uh, far more punch and uh, a little bit more of whatever makes the bang underneath that paper they, these are quite flat i remember them being quite domed but maybe the passage of time is doing something to my memory there. So it's a, a fairly interesting thing, I think. Let's have a look at the, the underneath. Actually, let's put the lid on it, otherwise everything's gonna uh, keep falling out whilst we're having a look over this item. So we'll just pop that on there. That nice hot effect, slatted sides, could be metal or wood, a roof and a chimney. And uh, there's these two uh, clip fit pieces here so that would they would just clip into the track like so let's see if we can get that in 
and then that keeps it the, the correct distance from the rails. So all neat and tidy and that little scroll wheel there is, is used to advance the, the paper roll, although you, it does help if you pull it slightly to, to line up the next one. So let's uh, take the track off there and we'll have a, a swift look at what it says underneath the item. And there we go, we've got Triang RT267 built in Britain. Having trouble reading that through the back of the camera there, so it's a nice heavy metal base, plastic sides, separately fitted plastic roof. So we'll uh, we'll just pop that down and have a have a swift look over the catalogue. There were lots of uh, sort of action items um, in the 1963 catalogue. Lights, if you think they're they're action, I suppose they are action, aren't they? When you switch them on and off. Available summer, 63, and there's the uh, the fog signal we're looking at there, RT. 267 fog signal available autumn 63 from from what I've read it might have been 64 when it finally hit the shops mechanically operated from a trip lever actuated by a locomotive passing over it as the loco as a loco passes so a maroon is fired from the line side hut a clip fit accessory caps not supplied you need a ready ready supply of those I imagine. Uh, looking at this uh, illustration now I don't think they were quite sure how the final item was going to look. Track cleaning car. I know we've got um, the side side tipping wagon there available uh, autumn 63. We've got the uh, giraffe car there also promised in 63. Some of these items aren't uh, promised uh, I think they're already available. And we've got the, uh, the rocket launcher there lovely looking wagon. What else have we got? The helicopter car there. Is that already available? That's not uh, not got an available by date. So maybe that one's all available. I never remember the exact dates on these. And then a very similar item, the exploding car, a very similar type of mechanism in there. We must have a look at one of those one day. Bomb wagon. That's a fairly impressive looking item, isn't it? And we've got the, the searchlight wagon. Again, I think that's already in production. And then we've got this uh, automatic control here, which we've seen in, in an earlier video. So we'll just pop that down, have a, have a swift look over the box. So really pretty box they've managed to make for this. Got a lovely locomotive storming towards you with the, uh, the, the line side hut there. And the word bang, fog signal, trying railways. So I think that this was produced up until uh, the mid 60s, possibly still available into the sort of uh, early late 60s perhaps I don't think it went on terribly long so lovely looking box and there's a, a pencil price written on there I don't know whether that relates to the price or not I haven't looked at the price for this item and there it says uh, RT267 fog signal mechanically operated as loco passes so a maroon is fired from the line side hut a clip fit accessory caps not included a reinforcing the message there so I think this is like a, a like a paper wrap on on a cardboard uh, box let's have a swift look at it it's be quite expensive to produce these things caps everywhere and we've got a, a lovely uh, set of instructions there again paper's quite fragile gone quite yellow let's just open that out it's just a single-sided instruction sheet and now we've got a rundown of the uh, the basic workings there and all the moving parts and instructions on how to, to load, operate and reset the item. It's always nice to have these uh, pieces of paperwork. And we're just catching up with the princess again and we'll see if we can get another couple of good examples of the fog signal. Pullman looking great sitting in the dark there. Here we go. That was pretty good so we'll just watch her go around a few times and see how we do. So that really is great fun. I think uh, 
Some attempts are, are more impressive than others, but uh, you could spend all afternoon doing that. But I think that's about it for this week. It's um, hugely appreciated that you've watched again. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you look back again next time, we'll have something else uh, from the range to look at. Thanks a lot for watching. Goodbye now.